massive chest. <laughs> when it touches your body to ground, you've got this really quite high amount of current that's traveling through that path. G'day, you legend, and welcome back to another Electrician Reacts. And in this video, we're going to be finding out exactly how electricity kills you. Is it volts, amps, or stupidity? I mean... We've all had our stupid moments. Ah! Ow. <laughs> and to help us find out, I'm gonna be reacting to one of the craziest YouTubers out there who happens to be a chemist. That's right, Starro Pyro is back and I am so bloody excited. Let's do it. Electricity is dangerous. But what is it that makes some sources lethal and others not? One way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Massive Tesla <laughs> That is insane. All right, let's just, I, just, I want to go back to that because typically you wouldn't stand in front of a Tesla coil and just have some sort of electrode go through you. You would usually have some sort of cage or something grounded so it kind of just bypasses your whole body. Obviously you could see on the side there as well that he had some sort of ground rod going off the side here, so... Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> this is an important question, and it's one that gets more wrong answers than right ones. Is it the volts or amps that kill? A while ago, oh. I made a short video on the topic, and in summary, I said that you can't pin all electrical hazards on a short answer like volts or amps. And boy, this made a lot of people mad. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna have to agree with Star Pyro here. I mean, a lot of standards across the world will probably reference amps as the maximum threshold before it's gonna damage you or at least put your heart into fibrillation. And whilst amps is a really good indicator, it really doesn't tell the whole story because if you look at something like Ohm's law, there are three components that make up that calculation and any one of them can affect the outcome. So yeah, I would say that it's not one or the other. Now I'll be honest. I'm not an electrician or an engineer, but I do have a bunch of terrifying electrical devices. Oh man, that was As well awesome. as the fancy equipment needed to put some numbers behind my claims. Oh yeah, before I go on, I should warn you that all the crazy stuff you're about to see was done completely for educational purposes. And in fact, if you were to try any of this stuff at home, you'd probably die. <laughs> so yeah, please don't try this at home. Taming electricity oh, is one of mankind's- that's um, that's the corona effect on there. I think that's called Curlian Photography is what they call it. There's actually a really cool YouTube. I don't know if this was Styro Pyro. Cool YouTuber called Hyperspace Pirate. And yeah, he actually does a really good breakdown on how this works. Essentially, they set up like a capacitor between two pieces of glass. And then like the dielectric inside is like salty water. And then they put like heaps of high voltage and high frequency through it and then you sit that on top and it gets this like discharge corona discharge that comes out when it's grounded super super cool effect and some of the photography is absolutely beautiful so i'd highly recommend going and checking him out but what is it exactly about electricity that makes it dangerous well this is a complicated question and the answer depends highly on the source of that electricity first Let's consider our biggest design vulnerability when it comes to electricity, and that's the nervous system. Nerve cells work on electrical signals that are a small fraction of a single volt, so it really doesn't take much to override these with outside means. I mean, anybody who's liked a 9 volt battery knows how easily a mere 9 volts overpowers all the signals going to your tongue. Oh. <laughs> I mean, who would do that? Energizer Max, the fresh maker. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> what a weird feeling. All right, let's get going. Here I've hooked up a car battery up to these steel rods. Now this battery can dump up to a thousand amps. Yeah. Yet touching these bare rods doesn't do anything to me. Oh, you think the battery's dead? Nope. <laughs> the thing is that uh, okay so let's quickly just break down what he means for starters it's important to note that he's using a dc or direct current source which is different from ac because we would need to then consider things like reactants and capacitance and inductance but instead we really only need to use the calculation for resistance so let's just say that he had a really high resistance in your hands you need volts to push through that resistance for the current to flow Whereas when he used the steel rods, obviously they have an incredibly low resistance. So you can short it basically with zero resistance. 
Battery can dump a thousand amps, but not through me. It's only a 12 volt source after all, yeah. and my skin's resistance is high enough to block all but a minuscule amount of current from going through my body. Exactly. Ooh. So this all makes it seem like it's the volts that matter here, right? Let's go ahead and put that idea to practice. Let me use this apple as a model of the human body. It has an even higher resistance than me, about 10 million ohms. In order to put a lethal current of 100 milliamps through it, ohms loss is I need a million volts. Why don't we test that out? You can watch the voltage here and the current here. Okay. A couple notes about the setup. I'm using a voltage divider so I don't kill my meter, Fair which enough. means the actual voltage is 10 times higher than what the meter shows. Gotcha. As for the current, I'm measuring the voltage drop across a one ohm resistor, which means the voltage measured is the current going through it in amps. All right, let's slowly crank up the voltage there. So, so you can see that those two electrodes are touching the outside of that apple and we need to consider like the capacitive effect of that apple. Very similar to the videos I've been making on like the non-contact voltage sensors. So what you might have is like a dielectric breakdown of the apple sort of the outside there. And then of course inside the apple, they've got really, really low resistance because it's filled with a lot of water with a lot of impurities in it. So as soon as it breaks that down, it's gonna start conducting very quickly. So let's just see what happens. Oh, it's conducting. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, the Holy apple's crap. dead. It's Ohm's really loss it I'd need a million volts. Yet it was passing 100 milliamps at barely over a thousand volts. Yeah. What gives? It turns out, you can throw Ohm's law out the window in situations like this <laughs> because the apple experienced something called dielectric breakdown. There you go. When the voltage yeah. across an insulator reaches a high enough point, the molecules in it get shredded by the electric field. This means the insulator suddenly becomes a conductor and will allow a huge amount of current to pass through it. Yeah. Ohm's law does not tell you when this happens. <laughs> right here I have a Van de Graaff generator. It's capable of generating very high DC voltages. Similar to what you get from a static shock, just on steroids. <laughs> the charges are small, but what about the currents? I mean, they must be small if I can touch them without dying, right? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and test that out. Uh, Once again, I'll be measuring current via a 1 ohm resistor, but this time with an extra fancy resistor that I built based on a video by Vitaly. Really weird. It minimizes inductance to get an accurate Cost reading. Shunts. I should note that I've referenced Vitaly's videos more than anyone else He's on my channel. Cool. You should definitely check him out yeah. for some cool high voltage experiments. <laughs> All right, let's measure the current of that pulse. Look at that, that was 40 amps. Yeah. So I should probably reference Electro Boom here. He's done a very similar experiment. And essentially what's happening is as that air breaks down, creating a really low resistance, when it touches your body to ground, you've got this really quite high amount of current that's traveling through that path. But as it sort of dissipates, the voltage dissipates very quickly. It drops off incredibly quick. Voltage here was on the order of 100,000 volts. The electrical power there was over a million watts. Wow. The idea that static shocks are low current is a myth. When you get shocked by static, you're eating amps of current. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. My giant tube-driven coil doesn't stand out at raw arc length, as the longest arc it'll make is only about two meters or so. Where it does shine is in its ability to make a white-hot arc to a grounded object. That is insane. It straight up looks and sounds like a substation fault when it's running. That is a grounded It also melts the steel screwdrivers I use as breakout electrodes. <laughs> it truly is a terrifying sight to behold. I know what you're thinking. It must be hard to resist touching something that looks as crazy as that, right? Well, I have given in to the temptation. And no, I'm not very sane for doing this. <laughs> However, I do use a steel file to distance myself from that white hot arc. But of course, uh... I'm still conducting pretty much the full current there. Besides, it doesn't stop the arc from jumping directly to <laughs> me occasionally. So why doesn't it kill me? Let's start with current. I've wound this current transformer with as many wire turns as there are ohms of resistance across it. Yeah. That way, its voltage readout is identical to the current in amps of a wire going through the middle. Feeding the grounded wire of my secondary coil through this will give the current output of my Tesla coil. Well, here we go. That's beautiful. All right, it triggered. Look at that. That's 3.2 amps of current. Nice. That's not low current at all. 
Wow. In fact, that's actually terrifying. That is. If you doubt my measurements, let's try that again with this ancient RF ammeter. This nearly 100-year-old meter is quite simple. It's just based on a thermocouple, oh. which actually means it'll measure lower frequency and even DC current just fine, too. Let's run it hooked up to the Tesla coil. All right, here we go. Well, there's an amp at least. Now, I don't want to kill the meter, so I'm probably just going to stop it here. I ended up buying an even bigger meter, so let's give this one a go. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm at full power now. It's reading only a little over an amp. Now, I measured 3.2 amps earlier, which is the correct measurement here. Actually, they're both right. This old meter reads the RMS current, and I looked at oh. the peak current using my current transformer. Since the output is a sine wave at 50% duty cycle, yeah. that means that these measurements line up pretty much perfectly. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, you ran through that a bit quickly. So if you're not familiar with what RMS is or root mean squared, it's essentially the calculation that gets done on an AC sine wave. It's able to kind of average out the voltage, sort of bring that down a bit because measuring the peak really isn't that useful when you're talking generally about the actual voltage. So a really good example of this, if you want to see the difference between the RMS value and the peak, is a video that Photonic Induction did uh, on blowing up a fuse. He was charging up capacitors with a microwave oven transformer. And the transformer itself was rated to something like 2000 volts RMS. But he was able to charge the capacitor because it's a DC charge. It will only directly go through that capacitor one way to almost 3000 volts. So I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check that out. So the current is actually quite high, but what about the voltage? Let's try to measure the output voltage with this vacuum capacitor voltage divider. Here we insane. go. Huh. I'm only at a couple percent of max power here and it's already at 50,000 volts. Now, I don't want to cook myself with x-rays, so I'm not going to push it. <laughs> I can still that. estimate the voltage at max power if I make the admittedly rough approximation that the coil is purely inductive. This gives a result of about 100,000 volts which is about what I expect, really. You still can't extract more energy than you put into them, however, since the current and voltage are nearly completely out of phase. Even so, the real power output is still significant, and that arc there is still burning many thousands of real watts. Hey, so back to the original question, why doesn't it kill me when I touch it? The current is not low, and although that power is mostly reactive, I'm still conducting amps of current for a substantial amount of time when I do this. All right, I reckon I'll have a stab at what he's going to say here, and I think he's going to reference the skin effect. Now, there's been a lot of misconceptions around what exactly the skin effect is. So my simplest explanation that I can give is that as the frequency on an AC supply increases, it actually propagates on the outside of the conductor, meaning that it actually won't penetrate into the actual center of the conductor. And in this case, in Styropyro's case, inside of his body. It'll actually go on the outside. So let's see what he's going to say. What's going on here? Many Tesla coil builders will tell you it's the skin effect at play here. There you go. At high frequencies, currents in a conductor are magnetically pushed to the edges. In fact, the currents in this thick cable are almost completely restricted to the outer 200 microns because of this. So does this mean the current just travels along my skin when I touch it? Interesting. Nope. The skin effect is only significant at these frequencies when dealing with a good conductor like copper. When the material is resistive like flesh, that goes out the window. That is so interesting. You can see this by cooking food in the microwave. The frequency there is over 10,000 times higher than my Tesla coil, yet it can still warm food quite a bit below the surface. So no, it's not the skin effect either. There you go. So what is it then? Well, it turns out, our nerves aren't quite so susceptible to high frequencies, and some are beyond 10 kilohertz the polarity flips too fast to depolarize a nerve cell membrane. What? This means your nerves pretty much don't register it, and that's why it doesn't electrocute. I should point out that the power supply driving the coil is absolutely lethal. What? And touching that would kill you before you hit the floor. Oh my god. The funny thing is that the Tesla coil steps up the voltage and current of the supply, while also making it less lethal due to the higher frequency. That's amazing. High frequency is also part of what keeps you from getting zapped by touching a plasma globe. Yeah. The voltage on the outside is actually quite significant, 
but a combination of the oh, high wow. frequency output as well as the fact that it's a high impedance source prevents you from getting zapped. Drake, aka Styroporo, you will truly go down in history as one of the best educational YouTubers out there. I have learnt so much more about electricity than I ever did before because of you. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, you're probably going to enjoy this one as well. You can see it. It's just moving, you saw the impeller move. <laughs> yes. You can actually see that it does actually have some sort of direction throughout the pipe. 